is ready at the hairdresser. Thank you very much. You ask her to take a seat and we'll get a driver to you as soon as we can. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> I suppose it is. And what do you think the secret is to growing old gracefully and happily? <laughs> a couple of the old ladies, you know, they've got such a terrific memory, they should be made to write it down because these stories are going to disappear. How are you this morning? Oh, not too bad, I took considering. <laughs> not considering <laughs> cancer and everything else, yes. <laughs> and you'd be a lot better if we didn't have him on the bus. There we are. Morning, Brenda. On film this morning, my God. They're looking for the next Marilyn Monroe, Brenda, and I think you could be the one. <laughs> we should kick him off, really, and make this a ladies-only bus. Well, that would mean the bus would be empty. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose even if we leave you, I'll still be stuck with you a lot, will I? <laughs> Here in the Brecon Beacons, people have got to understand how remote it can be. There are little hamlets here who have no public transport whatsoever, and they're miles and miles from the nearest village, leave alone a town. And so the bus we provide is essential for those people, otherwise they're cut off from life in general, really. They all have bus passes, but they don't all have buses. I mean, Garnet, there'd be no point in him having a bus pass. His nearest bus, he'd have to travel four miles to get to the nearest bus stop. Without us, Garnet's cut off from the world. Yeah. Have you seen anybody this week, girl? I haven't seen this whole uh, little thing, no, no. Have you seen so. anybody since you saw me on Tuesday then? No, no, no. Has it been cold up here all week? Has the frost been bad or, or is it uh, not too bad? Some, some days worse than other days. Never mind, spring's come in. Yes. Long time no see. Hello. Hello, hello. You all right? Yes, I'm good. Good, good. Yes, I'm good. Uh, oh, another... Ooh, hello. Hello in the back of the bus, Rosie. Right. All the naughty girls sit in the back. Oh, <laughs> the naughty guys would do better. Yeah. <laughs> Rosie, how have you been? Oh, hanging by your thread, lovely boy. As always. Never without pain, isn't it? But I'm not a one to grumble. Like hell, I never stop. <laughs> Rosie, where, where are you getting off, love? Morrison's. Garnet and I have got a date, haven't we, love? Yes. Yes. He, <laughs> he treated me to fish and chips. You've got no chance, Rosie. His mother warned him about you Cardiff girls. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people think that they sort of pass their sell by date and so they're just a, a nuisance and they, you know, they, they don't, I don't know, they, they don't have any life, but they do have a life. There's quite a few of them really do enjoy themselves, you know, they, they like to go out to lunch and they go to different little clubs and little groups. We very often say they have a better social life than we do. They probably know that they've got a limited time left, so just make the most of it. I'm an inventor, amongst other things, and I have an invention which, if I don't give it out now, it'll die with me. It's a spaceship. She's 20,000 tonnes, steel, made of all that. Uh, she's four, 500 feet long, 400 feet wide, 100 feet deep, but she's powered by an anti-gravity impulse engine. I've had it endorsed by a man of the 1850s, isn't bad, Kingdom Brunel. He's come and sat on my set he threw it in with a medium to uh, to say that what I was here, he'd come to see the only man who'd invented a workable spaceship on Earth. Me. What do you make of all this? 
I don't suppose the old girl knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> no offence, meant love. No. No offence. I'm an, en to I'm an engineer. Opinion, I've yeah. been all my life off and on, and uh, you know, I got a different concept of thinking than a normal person. So there, gentlemen, I'm going to give this now idea. I want Richard Branson. He's the only man I'll give this secret how the engine works. If she don't interest it, you get in touch with him with your camera. Get him to come down, and if he comes down, get him to bring a couple of decent bottles of malt, island milk, not island, island, peachy, something in the middle, then Fidix, this sort of thing, but something a bit tidy, decent. What are you doing now? Voting. What have you got there? That's my uh, voting card. Put out. Goodbye, Europe. Thank you. Thank you. Here we are, I've got what I wanted, I've my publicity. Not all our passengers are the elderly. We do sometimes carry people of a younger age who have got sort of special circumstances. We've got one young lady, Kerry, who had a traumatic incident up in London not really sure what, and we don't like to ask her. She's a very private person. She doesn't want you to know too much about things. We just bring her into town. She meets up with a therapist, has a little wander around, and then goes back again. In eight years, I haven't been out without my husband or my therapist. I couldn't get out by myself at all. My therapist has been pushing me to try and even to get in the van was huge. She had to do it with me the first time. I still have flashbacks about the accident, so anything that triggers it reminds me. Um, I, I think I'm still back in the middle of the accident, or, or it can be a, a complete seizure where I just collapse on the floor. So, um, And then if people around me that, that don't know me, then they tend to start calling an ambulance, which makes the situation even worse. So. Today's been quite a big day as it well. It has been a very big day. Yeah. Just getting off the bus by myself and walking around the corner to meet my therapist was just... <laughs> yeah, not something I've ever done before. <laughs> my heart's still pounding. I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm really scared. But um, I, I still can't quite take in that I've done that. So. <laughs> what will you do when you get home? Um, crash out, I think. <laughs> Lie down in a dark room <laughs> with a cup of tea. <laughs> I never ever wake up in the morning and think I don't want to go to work. You always know that something during the day is going to interest you in some way or another or surprise you. I mean, you get old ex-farmers who love to tell you about how life was in the olden days, before tractors and things like this. You get ladies then who used to work in the hotels in Brecon back years and years ago. You know, they were the chambermaids and, you know, they used to have little funny stories to tell you about the, the rich and famous who used to come and stay and whatever. You get such a noise on you sometimes, you, you've got a job to hear what anybody's saying at all. They just like talking about their old life. Hello. Hello, it's Jane from Pagliari. I've got Mr. Ross and Tim ready to be picked up. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very I won't, much. It won't be too long. Bye. Bye. Thank you. There we are. We're off to get Mr. Rossiter as well now. I can tell you about his army life. You wouldn't think he was 96 to look at him. The most amazing thing about George is his shoes. You can see your face in his shoes. Obviously, ex-military, it sticks, doesn't it, you know? I was 16 when I joined up. Mm. And I was 21. Tw My father said I'll give him six months. <laughs> so 26 years later, I said, right, that's, that's yes. my father. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what was your finest hour in your service in the military? Um, I don't know, really. I was in Malaya, I was in Germany, Palestine. I think my finest hour was when I got off the beach at Dunkirk. 
how do you find talking about the war? I don't. Not as a rule, and I'm not allowed to watch anything on the telly that pertains to the war because I am uh, post-traumatic stress. I did, uh, well, I have been post-traumatic stress for the past ten years. I have these sort of nightmares and that, you know. Um, especially when my wife was alive, she kick me to tits. <laughs> Wake up! What are you doing? Hi, boys. Hi, boys. Hi. Hi, boys. You're all waiting for candy, are you? Yeah. Yeah. You'll be lucky. <laughs> Good morning. I've been interviewed on the Dial of Ride bus for a programme. That's what this is. It's a microphone. I didn't know he was having it done, but I'm having it done. <laughs> Up there. It looks as though we're going to be stuck together for a little while longer. <laughs> Up there. So, Brian, I'm intrigued by what you were saying about the medium. Can you yeah. explain that from the beginning? Well, my wife died seven years ago when she was 60. She'd been in the clairvoyancy world, but she'd always sort of rejected it. She only lives 200 yards from me, my medium. She sits, there's a prayer, and within a minute, my wife has come and appeared to her in the room. And we talk for about half an hour until her power is retained and she just goes back to the spirit world. And what sort of things do you just discuss? We go through all the family, you know, babies being born and people who are going to go. What sort of things does your wife say to you? She still loves me. And we, when we get, when she, I was saying, what do they do over the other side? Well, she said it, that we do virtually the same as what we do over here. But she said, making love is a bit different. She said, in the physical world over here, it's a physical man to woman meaning. But over there, it's a mind to mind. But the orgasm that you get when you blend is greater than what you get over here in, in our sexual life. So I said, well, have you been practicing? No, she said, I'm waiting for you to get there. At the end of your sessions, talking to your wife, how are you left feeling? Well, elated to think that she still comes over to talk to me and still loves me and still wants me and I still want her. I mean, yeah. And does it ever make you feel emotional? Occasionally. Occasionally, especially if it's around her birthday or my birthday or wedding day. Up there. The end of November we got married. Met her in the July, married her in the November of 72. Up there. Ah. That's about it, boys. We used to have a manager who I remember back a long time ago, somebody said, oh, we should really go to so-and-so's funeral, you know, and, and he said, oh, you, you really shouldn't. He said, because if you go to one, because we deal with such elderly people and there's such a, a quick turnover of, of uh, passengers, he said, you shouldn't. He said, you shouldn't get attached. He said, because A, you will get upset, and B, you wouldn't have the time to go to all these funerals, you know, we'd, we'd be short of drivers. But there are certain ones and, like, even now, there are certain ones, if anything did happen, well, I just have to take a day off because, you know, you, you do get that attached. You just can't help it. How often do you get the death? Uh, you, it would probably average out at one a week, but what happens is you won't have anybody for a fortnight and then all of a sudden three people will pass away on one particular weekend, you know, and, and that's how it goes. But if you average it out, I would say probably one a week. I've had three cancer operations and I've had a couple of heart attacks. But it's not going to be miserable about it. It's not going to help, is it? I love you. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, lovely. They're so brave, you know, it's, it's amazing because 
they've got such nasty illnesses and they don't complain and they just get on with life. And some of them, as I say, look after themselves and they don't expect any help from anywhere, you know? Oh, she likes having her arms put around her. Well, uh, she'll be thrilled again in a week. <laughs> well, it works. It works both ways, Ben. I don't get to cuddle many people. I'm afraid. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the time of life for them. Bye bye. Tell us we see you soon. I take everything in my stride, no matter what it is. What will be, will be. That's what I say. <laughs> well, 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 I might see you again in another six months. <laughs> I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> it's been nice talking to you. Yeah.